I'm here today to talk to you about Luigi's Mansion for the GameCube, and it's kind of surprising that the first Mario Brothers game for the GameCube doesn't have the same jump and butt stomp gameplay that we've become used to with the series. Instead, Luigi's Mansion is all about hunting ghosts, and it's kind of cool because it, it makes use of the GameCube's dual analog sticks to actually capture the ghosts. Um, when you first look at this game, you may think that it's uh, kind of simple and that you know there's not much to the gameplay. But really, that couldn't be, there couldn't be anything farther from the truth. Um, the basics, of course, of the game are is sucking up ghosts and um, eliminating the ghosts from Luigi's Mansion. But what you don't know is that there are a lot of little nuances with uh, Luigi's vacuum that people don't know about. For instance, you can suck fire into the vacuum and then use the fire as a projectile weapon, or you can suck water into the vacuum and use that as a projectile weapon. Um, apparently, there's a lot more to the game that we don't know about, and some Nintendo reps at Space World said that there's... Um, there's a lot more depth to the gameplay that people don't realize and that whenever you get into the game you start to realize the little nuances of the game that make it fun to play. It'll make you want to keep going on, you know, hour after hour. In addition to uh, sucking up ghosts, there's a lot of puzzles in Luigi's Mansion. Um, the puzzles come in the form of inspecting everything in the room. Um, you can walk up to objects in the room and you can press the A button and it'll shake them and sometimes ghosts will come out or sometimes hidden items like hearts or coins or gold bars will come out. Also, sometimes just to capture a ghost, it's not as simple as shining your flashlight on the ghost and getting them to, to be alerted to your presence. Sometimes you'll have to do things within the room and man manipulate objects in the room in order to get them to come out and be catchable. For instance, there's one ghost where you have to turn your back on the ghost and it'll appear. You have to turn off Luigi's flashlight, spin around real quick, and then try to capture the ghost. Um, another ghost, in order to be able to catch it, you're going to have to pull apart two curtains in the room. Um, when you walk away from the curtains, the ghost will actually take one of the curtains and put it back. Once you go back and pull that curtain aside again, then you'll be able to capture the ghost. Um, as far as boss fights go, yes, there are bosses in the game, and the one that we fought was a huge baby. The baby will, will hurl balls at you, and you'll need to suck them up with the vacuum, hold it there, and then aim the ball at the ghost, and then let it fly and uh, stun the ghost. Then you'll be able to try to suck it up. A lot of people think that Luigi's Mansion is really simple and that it's uh, and that it, it may not be up to the standards of other Mario Brothers games, but from what I've played so far at the several trade shows, there couldn't be anything farther from the truth. It's um, the gameplay is addictive. It takes actual skill to be able to capture the ghost and some good hand-eye coordination. And there's a lot more puzzle elements to the game than you might think. So um, while it's probably not the killer app that a lot of people would hope for, Luigi's Mansion is still should still be on everybody's list for the must-have must-have game of games when it launches later this year. Hi, I'm Shane Satterfield, I'm a, and I'm here today to talk to you about Luigi's Mansion for the GameCube. Um, it was one of the three launch games in Japan, along with Super Monkey Ball and Wave Race Blue Storm. And it's a little departure from what people have come to know about the series from uh, past installments. It, instead of um, a lot of jumping and butt stomping and platforming elements that people have come to know with the series, this time you're actually ghost busting, I guess is the best way to describe it. Basically the premise of the game is that Luigi has inherited a mansion and he writes a letter to Mario telling him to meet him there. Well when he gets there he finds that Mario is nowhere to be found. He runs into Toad who says that he came with Mario but has since been separated from Mario and that he needs Luigi to try to find Mario. So Luigi sets off through his mansion which is haunted and attempts at extinguishing all the ghosts and rescuing Mario. The gameplay in Luigi's Mansion is primarily sucking up ghosts with a vacuum that's mounted on Luigi's back. I know when we first found out about the game, we, we kind of wondered if there might be a little more to it. And while there is a little more in that you can use the vacuum for more than just sucking up ghosts, that really is the entire premise of the game. You can use the vacuum to blow fire. You can use it to blow ice. Um, in addition to sucking. So there are some other uses and it's kind of cool how the puzzles work out as far as how they use the different functions of the vacuum but at the same time it's not like you get to a stage in the game where a switch flips and all of a sudden it's a platformer like you might expect. So there really aren't that many surprises in the game as you might think. There are some pretty cool little hidden nuggets in there and there, there are some cameo appearances from some traditional Mario characters like the Boos and Toad like I said before. But this is really an abrupt departure from what you're used to with Mario Brothers games, and not necessarily in a bad way either. The one problem that we would have with, with, with Luigi's Mansion so far from what we've played of the Japanese version is that it's short. Most, uh, most Mario Brothers games usually could take you in excess of 20 or 30 hours to finish. 
even if you're a good player, but this game will definitely take you less than 10 hours to finish. Hi and welcome to our video review for Luigi's Mansion for the GameCube. Um, this game is definitely a departure from what you're used to from previous Super Mario Brothers games in that there's really no platforms to jump and in fact you can't jump at all. Um, the gameplay mechanics in Luigi's Mansion instead of following the jump and butt stop mechanics that you're used to in the past, it's all about capturing ghosts. The story goes that Luigi receives a weird letter from Mario stating that he's won a mansion but the thing is Lu Luigi doesn't even remember ever entering the contest so he kind of he's asked to meet Mario and he does venture to go see him but when he gets there he finds that Mario's nowhere to be found and that the mansion is crawling with ghosts so he sets out to extinguish the mansion of all the ghosts and to rescue his brother in order for Luigi to exterminate the ghosts he has to use a vacuum that's given to him by a small professor um, the vacuum has a lot more uses than just vacuuming ghosts. It can also shoot water, it can shoot ice, and uh, it can also shoot fire. And of course, you'll pick those up as the game goes on. That won't be immediately available as the game starts. But basically how you do it is, is um, you'll have like ghosts roaming around the room. Um, you'll turn your back on them and they'll come towards you. You'll spin around and, and you'll shine the flashlight on them. And you do that, it stuns the ghosts. And then you can see their heart. Once you can see their heart, you want to press the right trigger button and then you'll start sucking the ghosts up. Now the ghosts aren't going to be easy to capture, they'll try to escape. In order to uh, keep them from getting away, while you're sucking them up with a vacuum, you need to hold the left analog stick in the exact opposite position from the ghost. And that'll help you actually capture them a lot faster. Other than the ghost capturing in the game, which is predominantly the biggest part of the game, you can also, there's also lots of puzzles in the game that you have to solve. Um, some ghosts that just roam the mansion, you can pretty much just shine a light on them and you can capture them. But there are 23 other special ghosts in the game that you have to catch, and you have to do a little more to get them. There's one ghost that's lifting weights in a weight room. In order to make him uh, snareable, you'll have to actually hit one of the heavy bags in the gym, and it'll hit the ghost, and then his heart will appear and you'll be able to capture him. There's another ghost that's shooting pool in a room, and uh, when he shoots the pool, when he shoot, takes a shot, the uh, billiard balls will fly into the air. You have to suck up one of, the, one of the billiard balls with a vacuum and then aim at the ghost, hit him, and then his heart will appear. Another, another important aspect of Luigi's Mansion is finding treasure. And the reason it's important is because at the end of the game, the, your points are actually directly related to how much money you've collected. And there are some nice little extras that you'll get if you collect a lot of money. And this actually brings a lot of uh, interactivity into the game because pretty much every object in every room can be manipulated with the vacuum. Um, you can suck pictures off the of walls, you can pull tablecloths off of tables, um, you can rattle vases and uh, gold bars will fly out of them. So in traditional Nintendo form, there's a lot of little hidden secrets in the game and if you really like take the time to sort, sort through, each, through each room, it definitely pays off for you at the end. The big problem with Luigi's Mansion's gameplay is that that's just about all there is to it. Um, a lot, I know for a while a lot of people thought maybe there might be a lot more to the game, that maybe the vacuum was just kind of a precursor to, what, to other things to come, but that's simply not the case. Um, basically, the, the game lasts, the average player would probably finish the game in around 8 or 9 hours, which is also pretty short compared to what you're used to from Mario Brothers games. So that's kind of disappointing. 
But the thing is, is that by the time you get you get done with the game, the gameplay is, has just about reached its limit as far as how much you can tolerate. So I can understand why they made it short, but at the same time, I think a lot of people are probably expecting more from the game than eight or nine hours of gameplay. The graphics in Luigi's Mansion are impressive, and they're the they are probably the defining next generation graphics for the console. Granted, Rogue Leader is probably a little more flashy, but there's a lot more effects going on in Luigi's world. Um, most impressive, to me at least, is the physics system. The vacuum, when it sucks in, affects everything in the world. And you can see dust particles floating in the air, and if you actually get the vacuum close to them, you can see the dust particles starting to gather, and they'll start come, being drawn into the vacuum. Another really cool thing about the game is the lighting. Um, Luigi's flashlight will cast shadows off of everything, and sometimes the lightning will actually strike outside, and you'll see his shadow on the wall behind him, and you'll even see some ghosts that you may not see. You can see those shadows on the wall as well, so it's pretty cool. And the real-time lighting is used for some of the puzzles in the game, because sometimes you can't see the ghosts except for their shadows, so you have to use those to actually track the ghosts. Um, Luigi, in traditional Nintendo form, again, looks fabulous. He's built of plenty of polygons. Um, even his vacuum looks great. He, when he runs, you can see the hose hopping around, and uh, you'll see his nose bobbing up and down, and the animation is really spectacular. But unfortunately, because they dedicated so many polygons to Luigi, the worlds themselves are kind of blocky, and they could definitely use a few more polygons. Um, the rooms are small. You don't get the big expansive worlds that you've seen in maybe Super Mario 64. So you would think that maybe they could do a little more with it, but in the end, apparently they couldn't. Another problem with the graphics that I should mention is the textures. Um, the GameCube has been, you know, it's been boosted up as being this texturing monster. But in this game, it's, it's, it's kind of hard to say that that's true. Um, granted, there are, there's an exorbitant amount of textures in each room, and it's, the texture variety is really impressive, but they're low resolution, and when you get up really close to them, they can appear a bit pixelated at times. So while Luigi is definitely one of the better-looking GameCube launch games, it still can't, uh, still can't compete with Rogue Leader. <laughs>The sound in the game, it's solid, it's good, but the same tune is played throughout the entire game, and it's, as catchy as it is, and believe me, I've been whistling it now for weeks, it still does get tiresome after a while. It's kind of cool that Luigi, he actually reacts to the song throughout the game. If he's almost dead, you can kind of hear desperation in his voice as he like hums the song, and if he's in full health, he'll actually whistle along and it'll be a lot more spunky. Mm -hmm. Overall, Luigi's Mansion is a technically strong game, and its graphics will definitely astound people. And if you're looking for a game to pop into your GameCube when your friends come over and you want to impress them, then this is a good one to do that. But with only eight or nine hours of gameplay, it's hard to rationalize spending 50 or $60 on the game for anyone but a collector. So I would say go out, rent the game. If you like the first couple hours, pick it up. If not, keep it, rent it for a few days, and you should have uh, plenty of time to get through it at least twice. Oh.